when they went to war with us. See what I'm saying? That's what you got to know. Like, how the South got all that had more slaves down in the South is because the South, like, on their end, they got busy with us. Like, it was a whole war. We was getting busy. They was getting busy. But they got the most busiest in the South amongst their troops. So that's why the South had, like, their little leverage over them just from jump anyway of having all the slaves. Now, think about it from a business perspective. You got all these slaves picking cotton, picking corn, growing fruits for you, growing vegetation, irrigation, all that's going on. And you ain't got to pay them. But all this profit that you get, you selling it yourself. So that's basically, that would be the equivalent, the equivalent today of having your own business. And you got 8 billion, 8 billion motherfucking workers, nigga. 8 billion employees. And you got them working sun up to sundown for 500 plus years. And you ain't got to pay them. Do you know how much money you would have? Do you know how much you would have? That's why they still got everything now. Do you know how much you, we can never catch up in their system? Ain't no catching up. In their system. Do you know how many generations it would take to even attempt to catch up in their system? They whole system got to come down for us to win. We can't catch up in their system. Nigga, they, they had 500 of their man-made years where niggas, they made money. We talk about financially. Where they made money off our ancestors and us. Right? And they didn't have to pay us. That's a lot of fucking money, man. If you ain't got to pay your workers, they just bring in the property. Your boss still pay you today. You still get a, get a check. Now, he ain't giving you a lot. You know, if you work at McDonald's over a billion served, you know what I'm saying? He, McDonald's making a billion dollars. Your ass only making like 25000 a year. No matter, even, though, even though you flip those billion burgers, though. So really, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> really, today, they still fucking us over. They don't matter where you work. I don't care if you're making 100000 There's somebody here, well, you know, I make, a, I make six figures a year. Even if you make six figures a year, nigga, whatever company you work for, they are making billions, nigga. And they're only paying you 100000 a year. Out of eight billion they made that year, nigga. I don't give a fuck. If you work for Apple, nigga, and you getting two, three, four hundred, you can, you can work for Apple, and Apple can give you a million dollars a year, nigga, as the president of the whole company, and they still fucking your ass. Do you know how much money Apple make at the end of a year? Do you know how much money they gonna bring in at the end of the fiscal year? Think like that, nigga. They making trillions of dollars off you, nigga. Feel me? Gazillions off you, literally, like so. You'll never beat them in that system. You'll never beat them in that system, so I don't even know why niggas trying. And then when you see when we did try to beat them in that system, what happened? They take shit away. They get the blowing shit up, Black Wall Street. They get the starting whole wars over hoes line, Rosewood, Florida. We can, we can go around, we can go around far with that. We can go very far with that. It's a lot of times that this has happened throughout their documented history, okay? So, the North called the South. Like, nigga, y'all getting money down there. We want some of them slaves. The South said, oh, we good. We good. Fuck, we need to send y'all some slaves for. We got money now. We get money. Let's do business, though. Let's do business. We got factories. How about you send us some, of some slaves up here? We'll put y'all in our factories, right? And then after 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 we put y'all slaves in our factories up here, we send y'all a cut at the end of the year off whatever we make on the overhead. So if y'all send y'all, if y'all send y'all slaves up north, send us some slaves up north. Alright, send us some slaves up north. And then after you send us some slaves up north, right? You feel me? After you send us some slaves up north, okay, then what we gonna do is at the end of the year, say they made a hundred million dollars, gonna send the they gonna send the south three hundred million back down. Oh, we didn't see 300 million back then. We made 100 million this year. We're going to see you. Oh, we made, we made, yeah, we made 100 million this year. We're going to see you 30 million back down or 40 million back down to you. Shit like that. And the, and the South, like, on the phone, like, first off, we already getting money down here, nigga. Why we got to do business with you? We got the weather. We got all the crops. We got all the workers, nigga. And we ain't got to pay them. Fuck y'all. That's what the South was on. So the North got on some gangster shit. Like, man, hold on. So y'all ain't going to do business with us? The South like, hell no, nah, we ain't we not finna do no, we ain't get, look, no, we not finna let you niggas eat with us. Y'all got y'all own factories up there, nigga. Y'all got y'all half of the planet. We took our half of the planet, nigga. Y'all do y'all, we gonna do us. That's what the South was on, you feel me? The North got, the North really the ones that got on some gangster shit, because they like, so you saying, so you saying, we can't get no money together. I'm still showing good on the camera. So you saying we the South like yeah shit nigga we good the South like man listen man 
We already get money out here. We good. They was trying to be, the South was trying to be nice, y'all. The North, like, bro, y'all gonna let us get some money with y'all. For real. So the South, like, no, we not. The North, like, yes, y'all is. The South, like, boy, Larry Bernard Hoove on Jeff Ford on everybody I love, boy, your ass got us fucked up, boy. We ain't giving y'all shit, nigga. The North, like, oh, so we can't eat. So you saying we can't eat. All right, well, if we can't eat, then we going to end slavery then, nigga. Y'all can't make no money if we can't make no money. If we can't make no money, y'all can't make no money. Nigga, we finna end slavery then. That's exactly what they said. The South like, yeah, all right. Y'all ain't finna end shit. Nigga, y'all know where we at. Get it in blood. The North like, oh, so you think we some bitches? All right, bet. That's what we on then. And they went to war, nigga. That's what happened. It had nothing to do with freeing, no sl freeing us, nigga. You feel me? And that's why Abel, go look, go read Abraham. Look, Abraham Lincoln gave a, a speech called the State, his Gettysburg State of the Union Address. I already read it. You go read it yourself. He says clearly in there, he say, I do not wish to go to war with the South. If I could preserve the union, if he said if I could, he said, if I could preserve the union without ending slavery, then I would. If I could preserve, that's what Abraham Lincoln in the Gettysburg Address. State of the Union Address. He say, I do not wish to war with the South. I'm standing in my own words, but this is what he said. So just go, that's overall, that's going to be what he said when you read it. But this is my words. My, I'm standing in my version of it. So don't say this verbatim. And when it's verbatim, you're going to know I'm going to tell you. He said, if I, I do not wish to go to war with the South. He said, in fact, if I could preserve the Union without ending slavery, I would. So... The Civil War had nothing to do with him and his slavery. You know, like, that ain't what that was about. He said clearly that if he could preserve the Union without ending slavery, he would. But they only want to end slavery because the South would not send them no slaves up there. But they said, well, fuck it. If we can't get no money, y'all can't get no money. So we're going to end. We ending that shit, nigga. That's what happened. And they went to war. You feel me? And it ain't even that the North won, really. It's just that they just stopped fighting each other. Because the North killed a lot of them, the South killed a lot of them, but at some point, like, man, hold on, man. We, we, man, we, 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 hell no. And they went to, we can't keep doing this. They was killing, we can't keep, so they write it down to make it seem like, oh, the, 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 uh, the North won, and then the Emancipation Proclamation was written, and Lincoln freed the slaves. That's not what happened. What happened was they stopped fighting, and they realized, like, hold on. Because Satan stepped in, he they leader. Hold on, we can't be using the same tactic. Y'all falling for the same shit I taught y'all. Because remember, Satan taught them divide and conquer. Y'all can't be falling for divide and conquer. That's what I taught y'all last. You feel me? That's what I taught y'all. Now y'all falling for it. Y'all fighting each other and shit. That's our trick to fuck them up. So they're like, okay, well, let's come stronger. What we're going to do is this. We're going to come back together. We'll say the North ended slavery or whatever. We'll still let the South fly their Confederate flags, which they do to this day. We're going to say the North won the war. But really, we coming back together as one whole, and we're going to get these niggas like this. We're going to free them from physical slavery, so they're going to really be fucked up because they're going to think they're free. But we're going to beat them like this. We're going to create law, law enforcement to keep them in check. We're going to make them work for us in our factories, which are new slave plantations. And that's better than having them physically slave. Because remember, we was physically shackled. We knew we were slaves, so we would resist and fight back. And they ain't like that. That was wearing down on them over time. All them slavery bears and revolts. Yeah, they was feeling the way too, because they would lose people when that shit would happen. So they said, we going to mind fuck these niggas. They actually came back together and got stronger after that. Like, man, we going to mind fuck these niggas. You feel me? We going to mind fuck these. We going to mind fuck these niggas. Feel me? We gonna make them think they free. Which was worse than when we knew we were free because niggas knew. Now niggas don't know. So really it's worse that they came together and got stronger and got slicker. That's all they did. Feel me? But what, did that st what was that fault at? Atlanta, Georgia. Then the actual civil rights movement, which was in the 60s. Where was that started at? 
Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm pointing out to you that if you people never thought about it and put it together, but I'm telling you that my information is correct about Atlanta and Georgia being the headquarter in the center of the Ram, and I'm telling you why. And I'm just giving, I'm just backing up what I'm saying. Now you can go research and sit with yourself and your ancestors. Okay. So the Civil War, the Civil War was fought in Atlanta, Georgia headquarter and Robert E. Lee Stone, however you say his name, they were so proud of him that they named that whole area. I can't tell you what it used to be. You got to go sign up on the website to know, but they now call it Stone Mountain, Georgia. And that's why I got all them Confederate leaders of the army. They names etched on the side of the fucking mountain. They don't get no more racist than that to this day. To this day, right now, you go to Stone Mountain, Georgia, you're going to see them Confederate leaders. They, they still on the motherfucking mountain. Nigga. Feel me? So, we talk about divine, and we talk about the divine feminine energy connection to the masculine energy. Now that we have started in Atlanta, Georgia, and we know what's going on with Georgia in itself, right? Now let's move to Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement, right? In Atlanta. And, and, they aim, and why they aimed at that. Now do you see why when they started COINTELPRO, they aimed at the Civil Rights Movement first? They aimed at them for they aimed at Malcolm. They got on Malcolm later. They got they was on King and them before they got on Malcolm. Facts. They went at King harder than Malcolm. They went at King first. They was at King way harder than Malcolm. He was deemed a bigger threat than Malcolm was at first. Him and that movement with the Civil Rights Because King, King had the NAACP. Listen, you had three things going on in Atlanta. You had civil rights movement, and then that consisted of the NAACP was a part of that, and the Southern Leaders Christian Union, or whatever they called it. It was a big movement, though. It was a part of it, too. So King had two big-ass movements under his thumb, and that all formed up the civil rights movement. You feel me? They were scared as fuck of King. They was more scared of King than they was of Malcolm at first. That's why they was beating King ass like that. That's why they was fucking with King like that, man. You think they weren't scared of King neither? Shit, y'all crazy. You crazy if you think that. Mm. Hey, who did that? Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you, boy. Thank you, Yeah. You crazy if you think that. Now as we look back, because we know Malcolm was more aggressive, we be thinking like, oh, well, they must have been on Malcolm harder. No, they was really on King first. A lot of people don't know that though, but they were. All right? So what you got to understand is this. And the civil rights movement was very strong. So what did they do to break it up? They sit there and they, they started what was called the Women's Liberation Movement. Okay? And the Women's Liberation Movement is what started the divide between the black god and the black goddess in this country. Up to that point, we was one. We was one. Well, up to that point, we was one. You hear me? Up to that point, we was one. Feel me? Up to that point, we was one. I'm not going to answer no dumb questions about so King didn't know was it funded by the Rothschilds, nigga. Don't you know the elites fund everything? Who you think fund the phone? Who you think fund the cell? Who you think fund the cell phone company that you with? That's the drive. I know I heard it. But yeah, who you think fund the cell phone company you with? Them the elites. Who you think own YouTube? The elites. Who you think own Instagram? The elites. Who you think own the beer you like to drink? Who you think own the grocery stores where you go? Who you think own anything you do in your life? Nigga, you got draws on right now. Just smoothie ass out of here. You got draws on right now. And who, what, what, who you think own the company that make the draws you got on your ass right now? Who you think made you put drawers on right now? You ain't supposed to even have clothes on. You're supposed to be asshole naked because cloth constricts your electricity, you smoothie. 
Well, don't come in this universe. That's why, you see what I'm saying? I'm coming here saying no silly shit like you making sense. You're not making sense at all. That's what you call a conspiracy theorist right there. You don't, you're not applying no science, nothing you saying. You going off some shit a YouTuber made. So if that's gonna be your if that's gonna be your reason to try to destroy what, what Dr. King did for our people, get your bitch ass out of here. You probably undercover CIA or some shit. You feel me? Like, nigga, you ain't gonna never ain't not on my plan. Let nobody disrespect this a black God that stood up and fought and died for our people. Period. If you feel that strongly about it, start a YouTube channel and document it, nigga, but not here. Get your bitch ass out of here, nigga. You know what I'm saying? King didn't know Rothschild's funded. Nigga, the nigga, the Rothschilds is part of the elites. They part of the 13th family. Smoothy. And they fund everything down to the fucking clothes you're on your asshole right now. Who you think made it a law for you to wear clothes, nigga? Them. Who you think make your goofy ass go to their schools? Them. Feel you know I me? Mean? You know, there's always that one student in class that need to get their ass politely checked. You feel me? All right. I ain't that motherfucking teacher. You can, if I catch some shit that need to be responded on, it's going to get, because I ain't been responding to shit all, all class. I'm letting a lot of shit slide. I ain't saying shit. You feel me? I'm just keeping the teacher. I'm acting like I don't see it. You feel me? Because I know niggas can't fight in real life. In real Right. You feel me? You know? You know sn sn snoofle up to his ass. Yeah, you know. So, King ain't no the Rothschilds funded the civil rights movement. Okay, well. What else you got to say? Make some more points about King that we can stand on to show that he wasn't the activist for us. Because if, if the only point you're going to make to say Dr. King wasn't somebody worth respecting is the fact that the movement was funded by some white rape. Nigga, the white people fund everything. They own shit, nigga. They took everything. They fund everything. Nigga, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Nigga, everything is funded by them, nigga. Come on, man. That, for example, I got my own website and I'm not no fucking sellout. www.theuci.online I own my website. Now, who the fuck own which? Mm -hmm. Who the fuck own or which might be owned by somebody else? But okay, now if it's owned by somebody else, who the fuck they work for? That shit gonna lead back up to them because they took everything. What the fuck are you talking about? You feel me? Like you, you didn't miss the whole conversation. Nigga just jumped in here because it said it was twenty four hundred people live. He let me get in here, let them know I know something. Well, start a channel, then, nigga. And we'll come attend. I'll be in class. I always listen to other people. What is she talking about? That's why you ain't doing shit with your life right now, but watching me on YouTube. I'm not watching you, but you watching me though. You were here with us. The chosen ones. You feel me? You know it's real, y'all. You hit a you hit a scrape. You know about fucking agitated you a little bit. They, they not already chopped through and niggas still like, so you telling me. Tell your mom you said, you like, you telling me. You didn't hear me tell you to wash them dishes for your ass to go to sleep last night. <laughs> you hear me? I'm like, yep, I'm finna go upside my shit. I'm trying to make up more excuses. I'm gonna just shut the fuck up and hope it don't take too long. Like for real, like. You feel me, y'all? Like, what? You know, like, the man, you know, King, you know, the civil right, you know, the Rothschilds, you know, the Rothschilds. But, nigga, what you own? We want to let us know what you, what you own that they ain't got their hands in. We listening right now. Say it. 
Say it, nigga. The car you drive, if you got a car, we hope you got one. That ain't being funny. Nigga, you got a car you don't own. Don't nobody black own no car lots. Don't nobody, if they if they do own a car lot, that's what they doing. They're selling cars. I'm saying, don't no motherfucker who you know black making cars, nigga. Who own BMW? Who own Bentley? Who own Nisa, Nissan? Look, that's why when people, this will blow me, y'all. A motherfucker told me that. Like, like, if they see you in a, like, like, no, like, no lie. Like, I just see people like, they see you in front of a nice car, like when I was in front of the, the Tesla, right? Uh, we, in the, we was in a Tesla or whatever, you know what I'm Oh, he a sellout. He in a Tesla. The, the elites own a Tesla. Okay, so the elites don't own Nissan? I'm just saying, though. The, the, so the elites only own foreign cars, huh? They, they, don't, they, don't, <laughs> they don't own Nissan either, huh? They don't own Saturn. They don't own Chevy neither, huh? Them, them us, huh? Them, them us own that too, huh? No, nigga, you just sound like a hater. Shut the fuck up. They own all this shit. We trying to get it back now. Fucking Smoothie. You know what I'm saying? You know, it was funded. Okay, it was funded. Now, what they got to do with King getting his ass whooped from while he was marching? They didn't fund that. The elites ain't fund King ass whooping. He didn't, I guarantee you, he ain't signed up for no ass whoopings. So you telling me Dr. King, when he marched, he went and sat with the Rothschilds and was like, y'all can beat my ass all y'all want. He signed up for that. No, he didn't. No, he didn't, man. But you trying to sit in here and take what the man did. Only thing I got against Martin Luther King is that his ass didn't fight back. Other than that, he good with me. You know what I'm saying? Because, nigga, marching is still something, nigga. That's like, like I don't know why people talk about marching because it's still something. Fear, nigga, that's better than sitting in the house on your ass and not saying shit. It got to start somewhere. Like, nigga, if you ain't going to get out there and march, shut the fuck up, nigga. It's always the other motherfucker that ain't even finna, nigga, you ain't finna march to the store. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't finna march down to the next block for some niggas who put their hands on you. You gonna go get some other niggas. Fuck is you talking about? So we damn sure know you ain't gonna march to, march on no shit king and then was marching on. They was on some gangster shit. They was marching in the south in the heart of racism with the KKK, nigga. They knew death came with that shit, nigga. They wasn't scared. Yo, bitch ass up, nigga. A little nigga. You a little nigga when you think like that. You know, I don't even know why I responded to you, little nigga. Little low vibrational being you. You feel me trying to discredit a whole legacy? Get your bitch ass out of here, nigga. That's what I ain't gonna do. I do feel like he should have fought back. Because I'm fighting back, nigga. Ain't no turn of the cheek over here, nigga. Oh, that's misleading. I ain't like that. So I do understand why Malcolm ain't like that. But, nevertheless... I still respect the fight. I don't care about him being gay. I heard he's supposed to be gay. I don't care where that man stuck his dick at. Only thing matter to me, nigga, is what the fuck he was doing for the people. Why does it matter where he stuck his dick at? He was gay. That's just like another motherfucker told me Malcolm X was supposed to be bisexual. I'm like, come on, man. She like, every motherfucker that y'all got to put a stigma on. Every motherfucker black. That's like me right now. My baby mom trying to say I want to, I asked her daughter to touch me. Fuck her like, I ain't no Chester Cheeto, nigga. Fuck out of here, nigga. Motherfucker, I always want to put a stigma on any greatness that come through. Motherfuckers want to put a stigma on us. You can't name one black motherfucker that ain't never had a stigma put on them. Name one. You can't name one. And even if your ass stuck in the Matrix and you believe in the NBA and all that shit and these motherfucking entertainers, every entertainer you name, they bitch ass got some shit on them too. And all of that shit don't be humiliation rituals. Facts. Fuck out of here, nigga. That's what they do. Fuck out of here, nigga. You can't name one of us that ain't got a stigma. And the only motherfucker you can name is LeBron James. That's it. He the first nigga in history that never did nothing wrong. No. I don't know how you can grow like that, but hey. I don't even want to be under nobody that ain't never did nothing wrong. Nigga, I need to know a motherfucker that fucked up before. Shit, now I can learn from you. I ain't listening to you if you ain't never been through nothing wrong. You ain't never been through no trouble. You ain't never had no rainy days. You ain't never made no money. Nigga, I don't... Nah, I can't fuck with you. You too perfect for me. Fuck all that. I don't want no perfection, nigga. I like skeletons because, look, you got skeletons. I got skeletons. Now, what we need to do with these skeletons is we need to crush these bitches. So we're going to start with this. We're going to take your skeletons you got, and we're going to use your skeletons to, cr to crush them. We're going to take one of them bones, and we're going to use them to crush them. Because bone crush bone. I'm trying to crush these skeletons with my hand. 
I might not be able to crush these skeletons with my hand. They too, they gonna hurt my hand, it's too strong. But if I take a foreign object like another bone and smack it against my skeleton I'm trying to crack, not only will I, I might crack my skeleton and then fuck around, break both. So how about we take our skeletons and throw them out there on the table together? You feel me? And now use our skeletons to destroy each other's skeletons. Now we ain't got no more skeletons. Now we grow. You ain't, you ain't no way you grow without no skeletons. You can't grow without making mistakes. You can't grow from perfection. LeBron James is the only... <laughs> LeBron E. James is the only motherfucker I ever heard of in life. Nigga never missed, made a mistake. I think the only thing um, that, that... The only mistake LeBron might have made in people's eyes is leaving Cleveland, nigga. <laughs> You know, that's as bad as it get for LeBron. Like, like so, hey, LeBron, so uh, we want to know about any mistakes. Because how you doing shadow work? Like, we don't know your shadow work. H have you made any mistakes in life? Well, you know, uh, I left Cleveland and went to Miami. Like, what? That's it, nigga? I mean, shit, yeah. Other than that, I just played basketball. That's the only thing you ever did wrong. You got me? Who you think you're talking to, man? Even Michael Jordan, nigga, was got caught gambling, nigga. Like, come on now. And you're not greater than Mike. I don't give a fuck how how he is good though, but he's not not better than Mike. G. Mike ain't listen. And <laughs> I don't even get I don't get into it because I'm not caught up in like that matrix anymore. But when I was in that matrix of sports like that, where I would argue with people about sports because I know shit ain't real, I can enjoy it. I can still enjoy sports. That's called Jets. As long as you know it ain't real. I no lie. LeBron could never be better than Mike. LeBron only because the nigga had to team up with too many niggas throughout history. I ain't never seen a nigga. I ain't never seen nobody. Got to team up with that many people. Not even direct them. Not even direct. Like, no, no, hell no. So, I, so like a bunch of a bunch of he lose a bunch of respect because of that. Like, come on now, they, they like this year. So they ain't just buy that nigga a ring. They ain't just buy him a ring. They just bought him a ring. Huh? They just bought him a ring. That's just an example of what I'm talking about. They never did that with Mike. No, they didn't. Nigga, even Kobe ain't get that. Nigga, Kobe, all Kobe could get was Paul Gasol and Ron Artest. That's all he got. And them niggas wasn't even top of their game like they was when he got them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they done made a team for that nigga. You hear me? They, how, the, how the fuck you get all them free agents to sign when y'all ain't had a budget to do it? So everybody, everybody took a pay cut. So niggas, like everybody cool with making a million dollars this year, and they already got bills. Everybody took a pay cut. Everybody cool with making two, three million this year, and they already got bills. Ain't nobody, no, no, no. It ain't about, it ain't about how cool we is or trying to win no ring, nigga. It's about the fact I still got bills to pay. Fuck are you talking about, nigga? I ain't taking that big of a cut, nigga. You tripping? If you a million, that you already got millions of dollars you spend in a year. These niggas got mansions. They mortgage, man. They bills probably. 10 million a year, you know what I'm saying? In bills, nigga, if not more than that. No. Mm -mm. You feel me? My bad, y'all. I dropped the phone. So, the point I'm making is, you know, them skeletons, you use them skeletons, man, to grow. You don't want to be, you don't want to be around nobody that's supposed to be perfect, man. How can I learn from you? How can you help me? I don't want to be around you if I can't learn from you. We should be able to learn from each other. You know what I'm saying? If I can't learn from you, why I need to, why am I around you? Why are you around me? We should be better in each other. So I can't, you can't help better me if I can't learn from you. So that's why I said what I said. That's why what he said, what he said about like King, like, come on, you can't do that. Now let's keep talking about the civil rights movement. It was split in half with the women's rights movement. So what happened was they came with the women's liberation movement in the 60s. And it was all these white women, right? And what they did was they pulled all our black goddesses into the scene. What they did was they came and they was like, man, you know what? <clears throat> women don't got rights. Women don't got equal rights like men. This was in the 50s and 60s. And one of the elderly goddesses I love, I forgot her name. She light-skinned. Her name Shabazz. Something Shabazz something. She always speaking. She light-skinned. She be always dressed with her, with, her, with her hats on. Be have her suits on. 
She like in her 60s. She likes it. Everybody know her though. She she big. She been out there for a minute. She be dropping her though. But yeah, the elderly goddess, she said the same thing. It's like, and she was around in that time. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, one of y'all gonna know her because everybody in here, we you know, we woke. So y'all should know who I'm talking about. But she spoke about it. She was like, yep, yep, yep. That's her name. Erica just put her name. Oh, yeah, Ali Shabad. Yep, yep. Yes, y'all already know. That's her. That's her. Shout out to the Supreme Elderly Goddess. I don't know if she know who I am, but I love watch. I love watching you. I watch you. I watch you. I go watch and listen. I like listening to the elders and the youth. I just like to hear everybody. But she be tapping in deep. You feel me? But look, right. So, like she was saying one time, you know what I'm saying? Like in that era, y'all. You feel me? The fifties, the sixties. We was going into the sixties in the civil rights movement. They had all our goddesses, all our goddesses, they stole them with the women's liberation movement. And that women's liberation movement was all about women getting equal rights. But this the thing, this is how slick they was. Black women and Latino women always got treated just like black men. We always been treated the same, like we was one. Remember this, y'all. But then here they come, all oh, women's rights, women's rights. What you mean women's rights? Like... And when in history did the black woman get not not get mistreated like her husband? Like 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 real shit. Like no like no. And, and all our women and I man into all the all the goddesses that was in the sixties and fifties. What was y'all on in the sixties that jumped in the women's liberation movement? I wish I could take a bet off and go across y'all ass cheeks. With all due respect, golly, cause y'all 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 set the whole pace, and everybody that came behind y'all just fell in line. Like y'all fell for it. And we can't cry over spoiled spilled milk, you know. It was in the past, but damn. If I'll be damned, you know what I'm saying? Because basically they y'all let these white women come. And I'm not disrespecting the human beings in here. I know it's human being women in. It's no disrespect. I'm just saying I'm being real. Y'all need to all the human beings in here go talk to y'all grandmamas. They was in the women's liberation movement. Listen, this is real life shit. Never in history did the black woman not get treated like her husband. When we was in the fucking field, she was in the field. When they was when we was sleeping in the barn, she was sleeping in the barn. When we were slaves, our women were slaves. They enslaved us all, nigga. That's what the fight was about. At no point in time did the black woman have any sort of freedom away from the black male. Or that no sort of point in time did us black gods have freedom over our black goddesses. No, we didn't. Nigga, they beat our ass and they beat our wife ass. They'll rape us, then rape her. Nigga, that's how they did us. They used to, they used to rape us. They'll come and fuck us in our ass in the, in the barn. But they don't tell you that in school. They, they barely want to tell you that they was raping our women. In school, they, they matter of fact, they, what I've heard out, they even trying to take all that out of history in school nowadays. Like, what the fuck? Why well, say homeschool your kids? Like shit. They was raping our women in the barns, man, doing slavery time. They was raping our goddesses. And then they'll rape us too. It's called buck breeding. Buck breeding is when they would rape us. Then they'll rape our sons and they will rape our daughters. they the original pedophiles. What are you talking about? They started the pedophilia shit. You feel me? That's why they got the trans age movement. That's why they be into sex trafficking and all that shit now and drinking adrenochrome and children's blood. That's because they was doing that shit with us back in slavery time. Nigga, we went through the same torture, nigga, together. But y'all let these why they let these white little human being women come and get in their ear. Oh, women and we we ain't got no rights. Y'all need to come join us and go against these men and get our rights. No white woman, that's your fight. That ain't got shit. That ain't have shit to do with our our goddesses. Now white women, y'all got that fight. Y'all got that fight. Feel me? I don't give a fuck who the fuck Cuffy is. If I don't know if you saying I lost you or they lost you, you saying I lost you, then get the fuck out. And if you're not saying I lost you, I apologize. Because you could be talking to somebody else. I know people hold their own conversations, but I just call lost me there. Lost you where? I hope you're not talking to me. I hope you're talking with me. Because what I'm saying is real. Nigga, let these white women get in their ears saying, oh, we need rights. No, that was the white woman fight. Y'all white men told y'all y'all couldn't vote. When y'all was already free. When we was enslaved, he wouldn't let y'all vote. White, not ours. What you mean? Women's rights. No. White women. Y'all ain't had no rights. Because we, us, we were slaves. Together. Fuck you talking about? Bitch, you was free. And I can call you a bitch. That's not disrespecting you. Because scientifically, you come from the stock of, of it took, you were mixed with a, you were grafted with a pig, a dog, 
a monkey and a snub nose lemur and one drop of our God DEA. And that made you, makes you a human being. Yakub, Satan, Zeus made you in our image. That's why you have two legs and two, two arms and a head. That's our physique. That's the God physique. That's because you were made and human beings were made in our image. Okay. Now, so if I call you a bitch, I'm not being disrespectful because the dog in you allows me to call you a bitch. Respectfully. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, you bitches come and y'all come whispering in our women goddess's ear, you know, and they fail for the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, you right, we ain't got no rights. Now they took all they goddess energy. Now, you know, this is divine feminine energy we talking about here, y'all. This is huge. This is the divine member. Divine, remember what I told you, remember what I told you at the beginning of the lecture? The divine feminine energy needs the divine masculine energy. The divine feminine energy is only creative. She is not an enforcer or protector or provider. That's why she made us. Okay? So, when you take our goddesses away, and they took a lot of them with them into that women's rights movement. Oh, uh, women ain't got no rights. And then once they did, they started giving women more um better jobs. Better, better positions in, in, in like in the corporate world. All of that, like the women's rights movement was a huge movement, and it like really took the white women to the next level because the black goddess was already being treated like shit. That's what I'm saying. Like it ain't help, it ain't help you, you, it ain't help us. It helped the white women because she was the one that was free and still couldn't vote. She was the one that was free, and her husband still wanted to fuck a slave. Think about that. She a whole white woman. She in the house all clean and free. He don't even want her pussy. He all in the barnyard fucking the black women. The black goddesses. She was the one going through all that fucked up. You know, he 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 made he was the one that made his Christmas holiday, his pagan holiday, and for Christmas he would give gifts to other men and have sex with other men and get drunk at these parties and have these all these orgies and then come home and beat on his wife. That was an actual ritual. That's what Christmas was. Christmas was originally designed where Christmas was celebrated. It was a pagan holiday. Christmas, nigga. Yes. Christmas, nigga. Christmas was originally a pagan holiday. All right? That's why if you reverse the word Santa, it spells Satan. If you, were, if you move the letters around on Santa Claus, Santa spells Satan. It's the same fucking letters. It's a play on the words. All right? That's why Santa wears red and white. White represents them being single cell organisms, and the red represents... Low vibration. Facts, nigga. What is you talking about, nigga? He was the one that on Christmas, his pagan holiday, would go to orgy parties, get drunk, give gifts to other men, have sex with these men, then come back home and beat on his wife. That was part of Christmas. If you didn't be, if you didn't do it that way, you wasn't celebrating the holiday. Yes, that was how it had to go. That was the ritual. It was a ritual. You had men would go to these parties, the white wives would stay at home. We were slaves in a fucking barn. Okay, we was all together, slaves in a fucking barn in the back. Meanwhile, on Christmas, the white husband, slave plantation master, would go to these little parties and have all these orgies with other slave plantation owners, and they'd be sucking each other dick, fucking each other in the ass, nutting all in each other's face, the whole nine, straight on some porno shit. That's where porn come from. They started that with the orgies back on Christmas. That's what they would do, and they would come there with gifts for each other and exchange them, you know, and they would have little grab bags. The original grab bag was about grabbing in that bag and pulling a random name, and on the, and on the front piece of the paper, it would have the name, and the back piece of the paper would have what the fuck you had to do, and you would have to do it. That's the original grab bag. You feel me? But I'll do a lecture on that. See what I'm saying? On real, like, so, you know, like, yeah, they would, they would go, they would go to these orgy parties, and they would have sex with each other, and they would give gifts to other men, and then after, they would get real drunk and fuck each other all night, and then they would be like, hey, when you go home, don't forget to beat your wife. Why do you think a wife beater, that we call a wife beater, is called a wife beater? Because they used to put them on, and then have to beat their wife, and then they would have to, like, leave some type of evidence that they beat their wife. So they would have like either like little blood stains from her on their wife beater or something, and they'll take that off and they'll take it back the next day, like, and everybody would show their little wife beater. They were originally tank tops though, but they start calling them wife beaters because this is what the slave masters did with them. Boy, I'm giving y'all real gems. That's why they're trying to put a two fake warrants on me right now in Georgia because they want me dead and we ain't going for it, boy. I'm going to do a lecture on that too. Coming up Wednesday and what they on down here with that. That's a whole nother lecture though. But facts, because of the shit like this, I tell y'all. Boy, they, that's, what, that's why they called wife beaters. You never thought about, like, why they call wife beaters for. You feel me? Why we call these tank tops wife beaters for? Because that's what they would put on. You feel me? And they would, they would, they would have sex with, each, with other men, give gifts to each other, get drunk, go home, beat their wife. That's what Christmas was about. And they did that with you white women. That was y'all.
that would get beat on Christmas. And your husband would be out fucking other other men. That was that was y'all husbands that would rather fuck another black man in the ass or rather fuck another black slave woman than go lay in the bed and sleep with you and hold you at night. Don't get mad at me. Y'all can leave. Y'all can leave the chat. Don't get mad at me. I see the I see the numbers dropping. That must be all the human beings. Well, get y'all fake ass out, nigga. I ain't sugarcoating nothing. You feel me? That's the shit I be talking about. Don't get mad at me because this shit real, real deal. Holy field. Fuck is you talking about? That's what happened. That's what took place. You know what I'm saying? That's what took place. That's exactly what the fuck y'all did. Nigga, that's what took place. Facts, nigga. That's what was happening. Yo ass was the one. You feel me? Yo, yo was the you was the one that he in a barn fucking a male slave. He rather fuck your husband. Rather fuck this dirty male slave and his ass and fuck his son and fuck their little daughter and then fuck wife. And they, and they all supposed to be these dirty slaves as opposed to laying in the bed with you. I know that fucked y'all up mentally. I know y'all went through trauma too. I'm not judging y'all. Let's, let's, let's address the trauma, address where it came from. Because if you really think about the real trauma, then y'all supposed to be standing with us in our fight. But I don't see you white women standing with us in our fight, though. I don't see these. I don't see you white women standing with white women. I don't see you white women being really standing with us in our fight. But y'all used all our goddesses to stand with y'all for y'all fight. Y'all used our goddesses to help y'all get fucking rights. That our goddesses never had any fucking way. So let's be real. Let's be real to all the white human women. Why y'all don't support us? I can understand the white man, but over in history, we've been good. Because not only that, when the, when your husband wasn't fucking you, it was black dick that you got. You was coming and sneaking and sucking our dick because y'all wanted some dick still. Facts. That's a fact. So not only do you owe our goddesses who helped y'all get y'all women's rights in the 60s, but you also, because you couldn't have did it without our magnetism. You couldn't have did it without our magnetism. You got to have a soul. When you, when you brought our goddesses in, you brought all that soul and all that cosmic energy with it. So at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, not only did you use our goddesses to help y'all get y'all women's rights, but then you turned around and used our gods to get fucked good. We made y'all feel good. We helped y'all. So I don't understand why white women be having a beef with black men. It was us. Us who fucked y'all when he wouldn't fuck y'all. What are you talking about? It was us that held y'all when he wouldn't hold y'all. Talking about you supposed to be riding with us, but now nah, y'all ain't standing with us in our fight. Y'all little white asses doing everything else with y'all life, acting like y'all ain't remember using us on both angles. What is you talking about? Any hey, white woman kill me? Y'all try to act like y'all don't like black man. Did you knock it off? You know we slanging on this thing and down here. So why is y'all flexing like that? You know what I'm saying? Why is y'all cap like, you know we slanging on this thing, but you want to sit here and y'all be acting like y'all don't even like black men. Y'all want to walk down the, you know, you want to walk down the street, see a black guy, young guy, or he got to have fitted head on. You want to clutch your purse and cross the street. You want to rob me. So you're going to act like you wasn't fucking, you're like your grandmama, like your great, 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 great grandmama. Wasn't sucking his great, 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 great dick. You know she was. You know it's a bond there. You know it's a bond there. But in today's world, y'all try to act like y'all don't even like black men. Or our goddesses. Y'all don't like black gods or the goddesses. Why? Just use a motherfucker. Then, right, it be a fact the whole time because deep in y'all spirit, y'all remember getting that, getting that bottom touched. You hear me? Deep in y'all little spirits, y'all remember getting that little bottom, that little bottom touch y'all be talking about. Y'all remember that. So what y'all do? Y'all like us. Y'all like to like us low key. Y'all like to wait till we become successful. When we in here, y'all come out the woodwork. Oh, well, you know, then y'all want to come in and, 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 you know, once again, drain a God of some energy. Because that's what you do. Every time a white human being woman come, if you gonna come love on one, if you gonna love on them, love on them. I don't want them with you in a relationship. But if you gonna get one of our gods, love on them. That's all I'm saying. Love on the whole way, the real way, the real way. Cause your white man ain't never gave a fuck about you, and he don't do shit for you. He's beat your ass all through history. He's fucked everybody else but you all through history, and he wouldn't even let you vote. He wouldn't even give you no say so in none of his companies. Nothing. Treated you like you what? Nothing. Facts. There wasn't us that did that. You need to take that on these white men that, that own America. Because don't know black gods own corporate America. But y'all don't. Y'all take that on the black gods. Y'all get in. Y'all get with us and then drain us for money or, or make up some shit.
You know, then y'all off to the next black dick. You know what I'm saying? What about the genuine understanding of the true bond? How it was. I'm just breaking it down and keeping it all the way real over rich like we do in here. You feel me? Like we do in here. Because if you understand what I'm saying and you thinking like, okay, well, we, we, we started off talking about the Haitians and how do we get here? That means you ain't paying attention. That just means you ain't paying attention. Because I already said that the, the Haitians, right? My whole point of breaking down the divine energy, feminine energy with the masculine energy and breaking and pointing out the separation, right? Of separating us in the 60s, right? Because when that divide came, we lost all our cosmic power. If the black God is no longer respecting his black goddess, he has no power. I mean, y'all could disagree, y'all could make mistakes, but I'm talking about in his soul. Does he recognize, though, what she is? Like, no matter what me and my wife go through, in my soul, I never forget that she's still God. Which is why when we do disagree, I be hurt. You know, like, ah, damn, fuck. You know what I'm saying? Because we are in like whole lockdown. And before like whole lockdown, I would never disagree with her. It would be a dude that could have disrespected her in any way because we was on the same vibration completely. But because we're in like whole lockdown, I've dealt with bad relationships, bad experiences. So that spirits that have entered me through sex. Think of how many, you know how many goddesses I didn't have sex with between 12 when I first started having sex and now before I got married? That's a lot. I'm just being honest. That's shadow work. My throat chakra open. We've all had a lot of sex. Come on, man. But at the end of the day, you feel me? Them spirits latch on to me. They latched on to me. So I have to cleanse that out. You have to cleanse them spirits off you. We, we, and them spirits that latched on to me when the last on to me of those individuals I had sex with, shit, exchange sacral chakra energy with, was aware of who they were. So we got to look at, okay, why don't we know who we are and why we do this and why? And they go back to these elites. The same world we in now. I'm using my, me, our marriage as an example. Like, we disagree. This should, that should never happen at times. But it has happened because, guess what? She got spirits that have been on her from other men she didn't deal with. Between the moment she started having sex all the way before me. I ain't the only dick she didn't did. You know what I'm saying? And I can't think like that. I can't be like, oh, well, I, I'm the only dick she didn't sucked. I'm the only man she didn't love. I can't. That's selfish. Because there was many gods she met before me. They probably wasn't in their highest frequency. Or they wasn't, ain't probably wasn't in their highest frequency. You get what I'm saying? But at the same time, at the same time, it was others before me. So in understanding that, that's why she'll be wrong in a disagreement. She might say stuff she don't mean. She didn't been wrong. Like, it worked both ways. But I'm saying why it goes through. Why do we go through that? Because of what they did to us in the 60s. That's the point I'm making. And when they killed that, when they killed that, that's why we go like that. That's why we, that's why we, y'all feel what I'm saying? That's why we disagree. That's why relationships don't work. That's why marriages don't work. That's why we kids grow up without parents. And then what happens? Well, relationships don't work. Now the kids growing up without parents in the house. And now that hurts them, affects them. A lot of us grew up without two parents. You get what I'm saying? Y'all see what I'm showing y'all? Okay. So now understand that Haiti is a country that never lost that understanding. They never lost that essence, y'all. The people they deem in Haitians never lost that essence. These are the spirits, of, these are the descendants of those certain ancestors on, that was on that energy field in the Haitian Revolution. You know, and we won the Haitian Revolution. You get what I'm saying? So they have always given Haiti a bad time because Haiti still tapped in with that feminine masculine principle. And because of that, they have gave them a hard time in the physical. But guess what? The people that we consider Haitians, they still limited in their power. Because guess what? When they rose, they rose. But then other segments of the planet didn't rise when Haiti revolted. So what happened was they was able to take over the rest of the outside realm, even though they didn't take over Haiti. But once they took over so much land on the outs outside of Haiti, Haiti had to fall in line. So even though Haiti revolted against them and won, in the long run, they lost because they just, the, out, the, the who they revolted against, although they didn't take their land, they took other land. So after getting so much land, now they got you surrounded. And that's what happened to Haiti. So what happened? That's why they don't they, they separated them from the Dominican Republic. Even though the Dominicans and the Haitians are still the same people. And then what they do to they did they did the same thing they did to us, with it, which is which, which is all of us, but the same tactic they've been using on us. Remember how they had put the house Negro against the field Negro? Okay, they did that purposely too. We're gonna put the house, we're gonna put the we're gonna leave this nigga in the field. We're gonna leave this nigga in the field, right? 
We only him in the field. And then we gonna bring him in the house. When we bring him in the house, him in the field gonna get mad at him in the house. The field niggas ain't gonna trust the house niggas no more just cause they in the house. It was all a divide and conquer game. Hear me out. Although we talk about house Negro this, field nigga that. Listen, it was still a grandmaster scheme. It was all part of the divide of the separation because when they take the field nigga, right? When they, all of us was in the field, nigga. You get what I'm saying? All of us was in the field, nigga, originally. But, okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go in that field and separate those niggas. So we're going to get some of these niggas that's a little lighter. And we're going to take them lighter niggas and put them in the house and treat them a little better. And them niggas that's a little darker, we're going to leave them niggas in the field. Now you got to feel the nigga house nigga when you never had that. And all the old slaves, we're going to separate them, put them against the young slaves. All the strong slaves, we're going to put them against the weak ones. We're going to create chaos, division. So when they, when they separated that... Now you feel, what happens to the house nigga? The house nigga begins to feel guilty. You don't think he felt guilty because he didn't have no say so if he wanted to be separated. We didn't have no say so in that, y'all. And they like the listen, hear me out. You got 10 black niggas in the field, 10, 10 light skinned niggas in the field. If the if the slave master came and grabbed a light skinned nigga, and like the, it ain't like the light skinned nigga could have said, I ain't going in there, they would have killed his ass too right there. You get what I'm saying? So most of the light skinned niggas are just going to the house to prevent from getting killed. They not even think about the big picture. You see what I'm saying? Now, what happens is over time, all the niggas in the field is going to begin to get jealous or feel away toward the nigga in the house. And then what's going to happen? The nigga in the, in the house going to look out every day and he going to start feeling guilty because he, he know he ain't working as hard as they is. He remember being out there. But he know he can't bring them in the house. It's not like the field. Hold on. It's not like the house nigga has the power to go get the field niggas and bring them in the house. He still don't have that power. If he gonna do that, they gonna kill both of their ass. But the field niggas, we not thinking like that. We was like, fuck them house niggas in the house. The house niggas did what? Now he's scared. Because it was always more niggas in the field than it was niggas in the house. See what I'm saying? So now the house nigga, out of fear, begins to relate more with the master. Like shit. To protect myself, I might as well tell this, the master everything. Them niggas gonna fuck me up. I'm in the house every day. You see what I'm saying? When the field, when the house niggas should have just stood with the field niggas. He should have just died right there before they even tried to separate us. But I'm just making a point. Most of them didn't think it would come to that when they first did it. They're like, oh, well, I'm just going in the house. You still on the plantation? Think about it. It's a whole plantation. And then like the master said, I'm taking you to a whole other plantation. He just said, I'm taking you in the house today. Think about it, y'all. It ain't like, so when you go in the house, you can still see the field. So you, you know, you're like, hey, I'm going in the house. The next thing you know, he don't want you to leave the house. He wants you to stay in the house. Now it's a command. You can't leave the house. He got you being a butler and doing shit around the house. You're still working, but not like they working. So you eating a little better. You live, you're sleeping a little better. And that little difference still meant a lot back then when they ain't got nothing out there. It was all by design. Feel me? So what, ha what begins to happen? Now the house nigga gonna start trying to help the master keep the plantation in control. Out of fear. And that's how you got all this. House nigga go out in the field. Because the house nigga would still feed the, slave, the field niggas sometimes. You get what I'm saying? He would serve the master and serve the field niggas. He, he was the butler for the plantation. You know, he get out there. He playing it cool. Yeah, y'all, what's going on? Yeah, man, we gonna do that, that, that. And he ear her, or he'll get cool with certain people on the plantation, right? That's that's field niggas. Certain field niggas, the house nigga will be still cool with. So he got like a dinner roll treaty going with them or something. Like, look, 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 look. I need you to spy out all the meetings and let me come back and tell me what they talking about. I'll give you an extra ten dinner rolls. Feel me? You got then you got certain you got certain field niggas like, yeah, I could use some extra ten dinner rolls. I do be hungry than a motherfucker. So now here come you. This how your first spies were created. Now you got the field nigga that made that in cahoots with the house nigga, but he's still amongst the field niggas. And he go back to the field niggas and play it cool and act like, you know, he's still a regular field nigga. Then run back. Run back. And, 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 and dip off. Undercover. He, he, working, he a double agent. 
On the low, though. Because, you know, you can't take the house nigga out there. They ain't going to tell the house nigga shit. So the house nigga had to use field niggas to get intel. They used the same tactics today. Nothing changed. We still on the plantation. And you still got field niggas. And you still got house niggas. All right? So the field nigga that, that had been, that's the double agent, you know, for his extra 10 dinner rolls, he didn't, he didn't want to been told that they finna do revolt tonight. Now, the, now, 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 now the field, now the house nigga, when he went back and tell the master what they've been plotting, and the master go reveal, go see that they was really plotting that, and he killed them niggas, or t or cut their legs off, cut their tongues off, teach them a lesson, he gonna reward that house nigga and trust them more. And now he moves up high in the master's heart. So now he has more power over the plantation through the master. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to never own a plantation, but if I'm in good with the master, I control them niggas. I decide they fate through him. See what I'm saying? That's how, that's what was going on. So, and it's still like that today. So, when you understand that, Haiti never fell for that though. Haiti stayed like this. That, what they call Haitians and that energy grid stayed like that. Didn't fall for it. So, they punished them for it. Now, fast forward to... We in Endgame, and you see all of a sudden out the blue, of all countries, Haiti, 13,000 Haitians appear at the border. Where they come from? That's the first thing you should have asked is, where did they come from? You see? Because see, for this, I will go to the laptop. Fucking, I ain't gotta pull it up. Y'all can pull it up. Where did they come from? Haiti. You gotta cross water to get from Haiti to the USA. So how the fuck 13,000 get to the border? So they say. And remind you, of all... Of all fucking nations, Haitians, it could have been Cubans, it could have been Dominicans, it could have been Venezuelans, it could have been Ecuadorians, it could have been anybody. But Haitians, though. Why would they come now? Why? Why? it's personal now and remember the Haitians have been living on that landmass it's not them it's the energy that they own it's the energy point that's why Haiti revolted like that because where Haiti and the Dominican Republic is at they used to call that Hispaniola and when they was fighting us the reason they, they called the Hispaniola is because it was one of the first little uh, energetic points that they conquered from us it's a very powerful energetic point so it's really not the Haitians, it's the energy that they own that makes them act like that. They walking on, they walking, they playing with real divinity. They, they playing with real divinity on that landmass what they call Haiti. So that's why the elites attacked it like that. Them Haitians that was at the border was not displaced. They came through portals. They got everybody thinking, how'd they get there? They came through portals. They were sent there. It was a test. It was a sign of the times. Ain't no way they made it from Haiti, past the Dominican, Dominican Republic, past Cuba, past Florida and all that shit. They would have came from that angle. Nigga, they appeared up in the Texas border. That mean they would have had to go clean across to South America and work their way all the way up to Texas. Go look at a map. And of all nations, we talking about Haitians. Thirteen thousand. It was way more than that. They put thirteen thousand because the elites like to play with that number thirteen. They were trying to harness our energy by by saying it was thirteen thousand. It was way more than that. And they came through portals. Remember, all the Haitians still intact with all the voodoo, hoodoo, sangre. They intact with all of that. Remember that. We talking about Haiti. And a lot of y'all don't know, I have Haitian in my family as well. I've been telling y'all that. You've been watching me. So, 
See what I'm saying? All connected. Reflection. Of all nations, Haitians come to the border. It ain't show up at Florida's border. They showed up at Texas border. So you want us to believe all them Haitians walked across the water to, 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 to South America and then walked up to the Texas border. Cause you gotta go, they gotta go from South America, then through Central America, then up through Mexico just to get to Texas. They gotta go through, hear me out now. If the Haitians came across the ocean, that means they they what they can't because the way the way they came in, that means they would have had to walk across the water literally. Or have help by some sort of power to get across. that war to Mexico just to get to Texas border. Once again, we know it was more than 13, but we'll play with that number. They say 13,000 Haitians showed up at the Del Rio border. How did they get there? That's the only question we want to know. How did they get there? And we're talking about Masters of Voodoo here. We're talking about Haiti. We're talking about Haitians. Could have been any nation. We talking about the only nation that ever defeat them, which is why they beat them down because they don't want the world to know about them. We're talking about Haitians. They came to the border. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. They got there through portals. They use divine magic to walk literally across the water. See, I said it as a joke, plain, first, to catch your attention. But they literally walked across the water. It's in game. They got everything that's going on on the planet. This ain't never happened. Of all times in history, though, it happens now. Think about everything that's going on on the planet. And we talk about Haitians who know they're gods, who know we all gods. And they would have taught this to the world too, but they kept the Haitians quiet. I'm probably the biggest voice Haiti got since Toussaint L. Over to. Shout out to the Zoes. You feel me? You see what I'm saying? They ain't never did this none in history. But right now, right now in this time, right now, they come across to the border. And now that wasn't fake news when they showed you that. That wasn't fake news at all. They didn't want to show you that. They had to show you that because people on social media started talking about it. Just like when they was hitting them with whips and people caught hold of it, they tried to play everybody and say they were reigns. Them reigns. They start editing all the pictures, made everybody take their original pictures down. All the videos where they showed them like actually whipping them somehow just disappeared. Of them actually whipping them. Then they try to tell people them, them reins, like that horses, because horses do have reins, which they shouldn't have, but that's a whole nother.